Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Cancer. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Cancer, I'm doing your reading with the Mystical Shaman uh, and the Shaman's Dream Oracle blended into one stack. So you'll see a mix of both decks in your spread today. So we've got the Soul Retrieval card on the split. And this interesting new card, Dances on One Foot, Balancing Act. It's a beautiful image. If you can make it out, it's a little bit camouflaged, which is really fascinating. A little bit camouflaged, and it's a moth. So this is interesting because as this card was coming out, <laughs> it's interesting I'm about to say this, I have a little bit of an aversion to butterfly imagery because it, I, it just gets overused, right? So when I see the butterfly, my first instinct is to say something like look deeper or it's not quite so catchphrasey, something like that. Like don't just skim the surface or, um, you know what I mean? It's like there's something deeper, there's something more intriguing, something more maybe unique and specific than that. That's kind of a catch-all energy. And then this one kind of fills it out a little bit more for me because it's this beautiful moth energy. And the moth is a very intriguing uh, symbol for me. First of all, it talks about actually a really kind of deepening and expanding of um, your ability to kind of penetrate or navigate the psychic world or the astral realm or however it is that you like to think about that but the fact that it's coming up with this camouflage energy is really fascinating to me it's almost like i want to say that maybe you're doing some sort of work related to um exploring the astral realm in order to kind of gather information or or clarity about yourself who you are where you came from but there's, there's this intriguing camouflaging energy on it that perhaps it's going to make itself known in the reading here. It's interesting because, because in the reading, and this, you know what, and this could be the, I was going to say in the reading there, we're talking about a relationship, I want to say. We're talking about your potential concern or it's like you have your eye on another's progress perhaps or you're concerned about their situation or... Or it could be something more like this, like maybe this is the two of you. And I mean, maybe you could even actually be kind of uh, on a spiritual path together in a sense, or you're very much connected, interlinked. But there's the, the fact that they're coming up with the butterfly and you're coming up with this intriguing camouflaged moth energy is kind of showing the differences in where you are actually, which is really fascinating because because of these two cards here that I'm just remembering, the heart of the sky and the journey here, I was seeing that already in these two cards because I don't think I've seen them side by side before, but when they came out together like this, I really saw this connection, right? Between what's going on up here in the crown or, the, or in the consciousness, in the mind, you know, with this owl here. And this one is just sort of, it's almost like a portal or some sort of I don't even know how you would describe that. It's just this energetic kind of maybe fractaling energy. So, but I, what I want to say about these is that this is kind of um, indicative of the difference. I mean, there's an incredible amount of similarities. There's a huge connection between the two of you. It's like, it's like you're walking the same path. You maybe have a, a, an incredible amount of parallels in your lives, but there is this difference and it has something to do with the different ways that you're doing it. You see what I mean? It's like the difference between a moth and a butterfly is really not drastic, but it's like this one is, is my leaning. I'm much more intrigued by the moth energy. I feel like it kind of goes deeper or it's more willing to kind of explore the darkness perhaps. You see what I mean? Um, the moth is just a, a, is just a more complex energy, right? For me anyway. And the moth kind of, appears for me personally when when that psychic world is about to really kind of open up in a in a bigger way okay so actually let's pull an overall energy from the creativity oracle i forgot about that
intuition. Oh, it's beautiful. See? Intuition. This card, I'm, I'm curious why it doesn't say enlightenment on it instead of intuition. All right, so it's just kind of talking about um, ways to navigate using your intuition, right? So, um, okay, there's and there's something in that. There's something in that that I want to call this card enlightenment, but it's called intuition because I feel like intuition is almost um, it's almost like a beginner stage. It's like a beginner stage energy, a little bit like the butterfly. You see what I'm saying? So we're potentially looking at you and another who are incredibly spiritual beings, very wise old souls. Um, but it's like, it's kind of like you've penetrated deeper or it's like your ability to perceive energetically, intuitively, I'm not sure what I'm what I'm getting at here. It's almost like it's almost like okay, intuition to me is almost uh, it's like one sense, and I'm talking about like the moth energy is almost engaging multiple senses in an intuitive but psychic like a psychic way. You see what I mean? It's almost like um, having intuitive sight, intuitive hearing, intuitive knowing. It's like having all of the clairs in a sense. You know what I mean? But intuition itself initially is kind of just, to me, it's kind of just like a gut instinct, a, a hunch, a feeling. It's a feeling sense. It's not broad and, and expansive and inclusive in that way. It's like, so maybe that's the difference here. Okay. Anyway, let's get on with the reading. This is why I'm saying that you... <laughs> that you have somebody in your life that you may be concerned about. Maybe there's a growing concern actually is what it's looking like. There's beginning to be a growing concern on your part. Um, and I want to say that it has less to do with this one that you're concerned about and where they are. And it has more to do with what you're coming into. What it's looking like to me is like the farther you're getting into this unfolding moth energy and this kind of intuitive this intuitive ability kind of expanding to all of your senses, if that makes any sense, there's kind of more concern about the other. And I want to say that it has to do with the sharpening of your ability to perceive, right? So it's like your perception is opening up, you're receiving more information, more clarity about the situation, about the individual, about you, about your relationship. Um, and it's, it's giving you some concern, but I want to say the concern, at least at the beginning of the reading here is kind of placed on them. It's like, you're suddenly concerned about them. Um, because it's starting out with many masks. It says the authentic self, many masks. This card has a, a, a very uncomfortable energy in it for me. There's actually a face down here in the torso. It's really subtle. And then all these masks here, it's like, it's a little bit like that emperor energy in the good tarot where it's like, where is the individual? Where is the soul in this card? This is all just the mask energy. I don't perceive the individual in this card, right? So, and then this falling angels, spiritual narcolepsy. So there's this sense that, like I said, especially if somebody's on a kind of spiritual path with you, or, you know, like you, that you perceive them as a very spiritual person as well, um, that there's this sense that they kind of just keep falling back asleep in a sense, right? That they just keep falling out of alignment or that they, or that they, or that they are, um, um, they kind of move through a lot of different identities or mask wearing. And what this makes me think of is, um, you know, like an adolescent, we could be talking about a younger person in your life. Maybe we're even talking about a child, right? Where this kind of exploration is part of the discovery, right? Of identity and this realm in general is kind of like trying on different personas or playing different roles or characters or dynamics in relationships in order to really find what is a match to you. So it's almost like that's what this person is going through is kind of all of this shifting and changing and trying on masks. 
And maybe some of those things that they're trying, those experiences that they're stepping into are putting them, you know, backwards a little bit as like falling, they're falling out of alignment in a sense. And so again, here's these two cards and it's like your eyes are on them. Yeah, I just have to look closer. You see what I mean? Because there is a lot of, uh, there's, it just keeps coming up as concern. There's a lot of concern for this one because you can see how some of their choices perhaps are not the best choices for them. But like I said, it's just a process that they're working through. And I want to say that part of, part of the concern is like, they're, they're not doing, well, that's the thing. I was going to say, they're not doing anything particularly differently than they have been for some time. So it's not like they're, they're moving into danger. Like I'm not sensing any danger or real concern on their part, but I want to say that you, like I, like I was saying here about this kind of fractaling consciousness, it's like your abilities are opening up. And so you're, you're able to see the, the wounds perhaps, or the inflictions, the concerns that all of that more sharply Actually, look at this. You've got the witness and the eye, eyes of the eagle coming next, right? Talking about having her eyes on, right? Having a concern for this one. Witnessing, that's the thing too. It's got like the, the obviously, and you know this, that the recommendation and the guidance here is just to be a witness and to hold space and kind of step back a little bit. But look at this. This is the fascinating thing about this card. The eagle already has... See, it says rising above the fray. The eagle already has incredible eyesight, right? If not the sharpest eyesight in the animal kingdom, I don't know if that's true for sure, but it's kind of a, it's kind of one of those generalized ideas that that is just kind of out there in the consciousness, right? That it's easy to grab onto. But look at this eagle. This eagle's eyesight is even being magnified and amplified beyond its already naturally sharp abilities. You see what I'm saying? This is what I'm talking about. This is what I was getting at with that intuition and enlightenment card. It's like taking something that's already extremely precise and sharp and adding magnification to it. That's where you are. And so in that sense, you know, it's like, it's like you're able to penetrate layers of this, this one in their journey. You may actually be receiving a lot of information about their path alongside yours, right? Because I, I sense that there is a, 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 an interconnection here because it's coming through almost like parent and child. Maybe it's, maybe it's partners, maybe it's best friends, but it's like this real kind of it's like you're on the path together, but you're experiencing that very same path in a in a slightly or maybe in a, an extremely different way, right? So it's talking about the guidance here is talking about kind of focusing back on what it is that you are doing, of course, right? Absolutely. You've got the the staff and the Indian cross coming up next. And actually this card here with the lay of the land with the figure at the top of the mountain there, I was kind of getting this, um, a bit of a Sherpa kind of vibe where I'm almost actually getting this feeling or f almost like a flashback of, I mean, maybe you are kind of a mountain climber, but it's almost like this past life type thing where you were this, this Sherpa type figure where you were, well, you were the, you were the one perhaps to lead individuals from the initial kind of door opening of discovering intuition into like climbing that mountain up into the enlightenment energy, which is what you seem to be really tapping into right now is, as this, this is sharpening and amplifying for you. Okay, so the Indian cross comes up almost like a checkpoint. I, whenever I see it, I think of like Roblox, maybe just because I have a lot of kids around me. So, you know, in Roblox, you kind of have to go through these obstacles or these obbies, and then you get to the, a checkpoint. And when you hit the checkpoint, it's like your progress for that up to that point is locked in, right? And then you can never go back. You can never go back from the, once you hit a checkpoint. But so it's like, you're right at this checkpoint and that's what this is. It's kind of like you've unlocked this, this amplification of your abilities because you're just passing through this checkpoint. 
but it's wanting to say as cool as that is, especially with this, the water card and the eagle card together are both these magnification energies, right? As cool as that is, the fact that suddenly, it's almost like getting new glasses, right? Everything's sharper and clearer and magnified and intriguing because there's this new layer of information embedded in everything that you can perceive now. And it's like you want to survey, you want to take everything in. And as cool as that is, it's kind of like encouraging you to just keep going to the, to the next checkpoint, right? It's like, keep going, keep going cancer. Because if you spend, well, I was gonna say, if you spend too long concerned about them, you can't, you can't really get away from it is, is actually what I want to say, because I see you continuing on your journey. You're heading towards as much as this is an incredible breakthrough and kind of this like, whoa, what is happening? I can perceive things that were not perceivable a moment ago. Suddenly it's like it's everything is being brought to the surface. Is that the right way to look at it? I mean, look at this one here, right? The witness card. She's got, is it in both her hands? At least in this one hand. This one I'm talking about, right? It's like, so her hand now has the ability to, has the sense of sight in it. You see what I mean? So it's like, it's like this overlapping of, Overlapping of senses, which is funny. We were watching a movie, me and my daughter, yesterday. We went to see Bad Guys at the theater. It's a horrible movie, a new kids movie that's out. I only got 15 minutes into the movie and I just completely checked out. Um, but the very opening scene, there was this kind of conversation about senses, kind of blend, being able to like see sound or hear color. It's almost like that, like this kind of blending of senses that you're kind of moving into and like I said as much as there's this desire to examine to use that new lens to examine everything it's like at this point at this point it's only well at this point it's only giving you concern for the other I want to say that that's not going to go away though because <laughs> because you're coming into this lay of the land card here with the ancestor's wisdom. It's a really fascinating card. So look at this one. This figure makes it to the top of the mountain. Fascinating that moon is there, although the moon I don't think is wanting to be part of this discussion today, but what is wanting to come in is this land. Look at the land below, right? Which has all this kind of crop circle type of energy. And it's like getting up to the top of this peak, the top of the mountain, and looking back over the landscape, there's, it's almost like being able to read the landscape, like the, um, like the crop circles, you know, ever, there's always discussion about what's the meaning of the crop circles. What are the crop circles all about? And it's almost like you're suddenly able to hear the crop circles, which is really fascinating because I was going to say, read them, like looking at them, you can read the symbols of them. It's actually coming through more like hearing that you can hear the crop circles speak to you. See what I mean? It's this blending of, of senses or, or things coming through senses that they, that or maybe just like a new sense opening up for you. If you have always been like clairvoyant, maybe you're, maybe you're moving into clairaudience. You see what I'm saying? It's like you're, your clairs are expanding is what I want to say, but you've got this energy too. You're, you are way up at the top of this peak, looking down over the land and receiving all of this new information about that, about the realm. But then you've got these two cards coming up too: the coyote and the lower world. And that's what, that's what we're talking about here. It's like your person, your partner is still in this energy here. It's like, they're still at the base of the mountain or at some process in the mountain. And when you look back and perceive the embedded information in the circumstance in which they are still within, it brings out this coyote energy, which to me is just, it's kind of like a, a fear trigger because you're perceiving the lower world. I'm not saying that your partner is in the lower world, but okay, how do I explain this? Have you ever had one of those incredibly profound 
consciousness altering visions, meditations, dreams, where it's like you feel like you went to 5D. It's like you feel like you went to the new earth and it's so glorious. And then when it's over and you come back here and you look around this realm, it's like it's just grimy in comparison. It's very shadowy. It's very um, dimmed way down, right? So it's like you seem to be perceiving more regularly or consistently from this kind of higher lens, right? Because you've got all of this going on, heart of the sky. And your person is still in this, in this very much this 3D type of energy. And so it's like when you're consistently holding kind of a 5D lens and looking at somebody who's still very much like exploring the three-dimensional um, identity shifting space, it's, it's like it's very disconcerting to you, right? It's a bit of a, it's a discomfort, which has been coming up a lot with this whole aversion. The energy of aversion keeps coming in. Okay, but we're ending here with this adaptability card at the end, which is really beautiful. There's a lot in this card that is still making itself known to me. It's like, this is a new thing. This is kind of a new, this is a new energy or a new idea here coming in at the end of the reading because it's, okay, it's something like this. You and somebody were kind of hand in hand, traveling parallel paths, you know, step by step together perhaps, something has shifted where you have suddenly come through some kind of a, you've hit this this checkpoint, you've had this breakthrough where your perception is opening up and then suddenly it's like looking at your partner and, and it's like, holy crap, where did they go? It's like suddenly you're just seeing this strange shell of a identity that it's like, where is this person exactly? What is going on? It's, it's, so it's kind of this, like disconnect, do you see what I mean? Which is a little bit startling to you and feels a little strange and disconcerting to you, right? But I wanna say there's actually a lot more. It's like, that's the first thing that, that's the first thing that hits you. I'm suddenly getting like a few readings ago, going back to all that moon energy in the old, the old readings, like two weeks ago, the moon energy. And there was all this talk about, I keep seeing this kind of couple sitting at a table, having a conversation. One partner gets up and kind of leaves the room or goes out onto the porch to, to answer the door, pick up a package, receive something. And in that receiving, right? In that receiving, it's almost like getting this new lens. Suddenly there's kind of a disconnect between the partners because it's like they're, they're, they're in, it's like you've passed this checkpoint, there's no going back and they're not quite at that checkpoint yet. So they haven't picked that up or they're not quite where you are. And it's a significant shift. It's a significant check point. So once you're on this side of it, it really kind of, that's what this is talking about. It really accentuates and amplifies the difference. And it's almost like it, it magnifies it almost to a point of exaggeration where it can kind of freak you out a little bit. But okay, so this, this, this card here at the end, there's all this stuff coming up about the trees and that's going back even farther readings. So there's this kind of, this, there's an energy embedded in the environment or in this realm that has up until now been silent or unseen or unexpressed, right? And it's almost like you're now coming into this space where you can, you suddenly see it it's suddenly coming into view for you. Suddenly you're hearing the crop circles. Suddenly you're, it's like you're hearing the trees talking in a sense, right? So it's like this, yes, this may be happening too, but it's it's like what I was saying at the beginning here, that that's almost, that's kind of like a surf. Okay, this is great. It's kind of like the surface experience with the butterfly and the, and the, the moth. The butterfly is kind of an easy uh, primary version of the complex, uh, moth energy, just like the enlightenment and intuition conversation. It's almost like you're now kind of back in that place in this beginner type of energy in this new space that you're in, where you're being inundated with this 
flow of information about the realm, about the truth of this realm or the truth of your partner and their progress, whatever it is. And this is kind of the, this is kind of the surface or initial experience of it is just like, holy shit. There's a lot of shadow or a lot of discomfort there, right? But it's almost like, but, but look at that phenomenon as incredible. The fact that you're suddenly able to pick up all of this extra information and what else can you pick up? It's like your and first instinct is to look at your partner because they've been with you this whole time. You're very connected to them and you want to say, Hey, are you seeing what I'm seeing? But it's almost like, but take that lens and play with it a little bit, right? But I'm also getting some sort of an interesting little glimpse of something with this, with this card about, um, it's almost like, it's almost kind of coming through as like uh, healing from a dis, like remote healing or re maybe remote viewing. But it's almost like this one, this card is your person, right? Still kind of very much embedded in this realm and something about your gaze upon them, especially through this new lens is somehow kind of activating something within them. We're talking about when I'm talking about that, there's an aspect of this realm that has been silent or unexpressed. It's almost like from your vantage point now through this lens that you have now being the, the consciousness looking upon this energy, it's, it's activating or ex it pushing to towards expression, this energy that has been latent or unexpressed. You see what I'm saying? And I want to say that it's, Potentially in your partner, I, it could it could be in a in a broader environment, but we're focused specifically on a, a specific individual. So okay, so that's really fascinating. There's something like you may be feeling kind of this disconnect between you and your your person, but your you are having a a big impact on them in some regard. It's, I was going to say, especially when you get over the discomfort of this, but I feel like it doesn't matter. The, it's almost like your eyes on them, your eyes on them, your witnessing of them, no matter how you're feeling or maybe judging their experience or their situation, it doesn't even matter. It's the fact that you have passed this checkpoint. It's almost like that's part of your... Um, opening up of your abilities or your expression is the fact that you know what I mean? It's almost like because, because you have it looking upon them is somehow translating it to them as well. If that makes any sense. Okay. So I'm going to continue to pull cards and create an extended. I apologize. I feel like this reading was really disjointed, but all right. I'm going to continue to pull cards and create an extended. If you're interested in the, in the extended link is in the description. And if not, I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.